It's me this time, right? I believe so. Oh my God, I have a lot. Good. Why, do you have... <coughs> do you not have a lot or do you have... I can It's hard for me to tell. Never know. If I've got just a couple of words and then just a couple of words, just a couple of words, I don't know if that means I've got a lot or <laughs> there's a big thought there that we'll have spark conversation. Okay. Who knows? Whatever. Because I've got a whole section that I'm not even sure why it's in there. <laughs> it's for a whole we'll other film. Goes. Might be. Might be. Godzilla versus the smog monster. But oh, here it is. minute. Oh, that right. would go minute yeah, by minute. Yeah, absolutely. That would be like so fun. It was so fun to see it. You excuse theater. me. I have quote COVID. Oh, okay. No, I shouldn't say that. <laughs> Actually, you'd be the only person who wouldn't worry because you wouldn't be able to get it. I wouldn't think. I've gotten it twice now, but this close. I believe. After. Yeah, it doesn't. Yeah, yeah. you have to wait. You have <laughs> I'm to waiting. Wait. <laughs> I'm waiting it out. I'm soon now. I hope. Yep. How do you do? We are about to unfold the story of Ghost Frankenstein. My son, would you destroy that which I, your father, dedicated his life to creating? What if it had another brain? Whose brain? Your brain. Bollard! What good is a brain without eyes to see? I warned you that you might regret this action. We We warned you. You've been warned. Welcome back to Frankenstein Minute, the podcast that dissects the Universal Frankenstein film series minute by minute. I am Tom Lang. And I'm Bill Evenson, and you join us for minute 42 of Universal oh. of 1940. Oh, fuck. I oh, fucked it all. Oh, my God. The listening party is canceled. Take two. Okay. And, I, and I'm Bill Evenson, and you join us for minute 42 of 42's. Well, it's just, I can't, I can't make it work. You want me to do it? Yeah. <laughs> all right. You join us for minute 42 of 1942's. Yeah, it still doesn't yeah, still work. Doesn't, it's, yeah, it's whatever. Harder than it was think. better last week than it was this week. All right, screw it. You guys know what we're doing. Yeah. It's a uh, it's, uh, blah, blah, blah of Frankenstein. And if you're joining us on the Thursday, you know, there's nothing going on. But if you join us on Friday, March 8th, this is the anniversary of the release of Mad Monster Party. Oh. What's your take on Mad Monster Party? I love it, but then I saw it when I was a little kid. Okay. Right in that wheelhouse of like 72, 73, 74. Yeah. Prime monster kid territory in yeah. the 70s. Right. And the library would show movie. I saw Revenge of God or Godzilla's Revenge or whatever it is with the little kid. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Saw that there and uh, a bunch of stuff. And they had it one, you know, one afternoon. Mom would just drop us off and we'd all sit on the floor in the room and watch this. And uh, I was already a fan of those Rankin Bass animated things. And this one had monsters. Yep. It's and it had Boris Karloff. So sort it was. Of. Well, no, he does the voice. Oh, he does the voice? Yeah. Oh, he does the voice. He does the voice. That's right. Okay. I'm and sorry. it was written by Harvey Kurtzman. Well, because we, I watched it as part of our Karloff thing. Yeah. Because I don't think I'd ever seen it before. Oh, okay. And, he, and it was written by Harvey Kurtzman. And so it's like the perfect trifecta right there. And I thought it was great. And I still love it. You still love it? Yeah. You thought it was great and you still love it. Yeah. What do you think of it? It's, it's okay. I mean, over, <laughs> I mean, to be honest and realistic, yes. Objectively, Objectively, it could be better. It could be better, but. Yeah. It's a cherished thing from my childhood. So. Yeah, and I have a lot of those, too. They, hey, they, I still like Smokey and the Bandit. i got to watch that. I haven't watched that in forever. You don't really I was trying to. to explain who Paul Williams is to someone, and the best I could think of was Smokey, Smokey and the, the Bandit, Bandit, which is just such a terrible way to explain who Paul Williams well, is. Uh, you want to start with Phantom of Paradise, but of course that's your... Well, you want to start with the fact that he was a songwriter. Well, yeah, no. He was like course, one of the yeah. preeminent... Yeah, he's, he's like head of ASCAP or something like that. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. He's, like, he's got a major <laughs> career. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And he just decided to also be in Smokey and the Bandit, and that's what I... <laughs> well, he had an acting career alongside. He's in one of the Planet of the Apes movies. Oh, yeah. Uh, in oh, fact, is, there's, a, there's a really funny clip of him on The Tonight Show still in makeup and costume. Oh, I didn't. Never seen that. Yeah, it's pretty funny. All right, so this minute opens with, you know, Tom started the minute, and before he even hit play, I was laughing at <laughs> Cedric Hardwick's face. And Tom, do you want to tell uh, what you said? I said his face, he looks like when my kids were little and resisting toilet training, they'd go hide in the corner and try not to poop. And that's what his face looks like. Oh, try not to poop. Yeah. Oh, I thought you meant they would just go and poop. Because well, when you're that kid, or, you got that a diaper bo- on. So or you just both. Poop. Both. Okay. Either, either or. I miss that. I miss that idea of uh, life that you could just... Just, like if right now, why can't I just go poop? Why not? Why is that a problem? <laughs> well, Tom? you know, What's the matter give it a few you? years and <laughs> yeah, that's a good you'll point. get there. <laughs> we'll get there. Yeah. But that, that, in fact, this will probably come up again during Evan Costello. <laughs> 
when we're yeah. well past our yeah. prize. Yes. Uh, you must realize, must realize my, my problem. problem. And First again, of all, he's doing the Hardwick hands. Doing the Hardwick hands. Yeah. <laughs> I like Hardwick hands. Yeah. I was calling them uh, Ludwig fingers. First of all, the, the subtitle uses British spelling. You must realize my problem. Yeah. So I like that. Uh, also, what is his problem? Is, is it that Igor is threatening him? He's got him? a poop. Is what he's got a poop. I <laughs> see. Okay, no. What, his, um, what, yeah, I think Igor is threatening him. The monster is not like something... part he, of his legacy? Something he feels that he needs to... Like, he could just say, no, nah, fuck it. He, well, he, I think he needs to not necessarily clear his father's name, like Wolf thought, but this is a pretty big black eye. To the family? To the family. To, to the, the family. family. Okay. And he doesn't want this thing wandering around. People are starting to realize what it is, or who he is, or whatever you want to say. Are they? Well, Igor is, well, and okay, he's well, they, gonna. They're they gonna. Could. They're gonna. They're gonna. So I think he just like I got to get this you know what out I did? of my hair. I did something plate. I never do. I turned the movie on. Uh, maybe even this morning or last night it was, and we watched like 10 minutes before this minute and oh, 10 right. minutes after this minute. So you're yeah. right. They definitely are, very soon they're going to figure it shit's, out. Shit's going to hit the fan yeah, pretty but I quick. I don't know that anybody in this movie ever actually says, other than, you know, Igor, says who that, that this is Frankenstein's monster. I don't think that, I don't know that I don't anybody ever actually... Eric ever quite figures it out. Figures it out, yeah. But, know, but the threat is there. Yeah. Igor could, it's already threatened to, well, you wouldn't want all your friends to find out about this, exactly. would you? Exactly. Know? Well, exactly. Okay, so there you go. That is right. Okay, so that's it. That's one thing. I think that, that's his the other one part of his is, problem. I think another problem he has, because I'm trying to th- look at this from his perspective, the, is that the police can't hold him. Because what he's got right now is a situation where Igor and the monster and Bomer are all living in the dorm downstairs. And, and he just <laughs> wants to get down to some Frankenstein shit. And in this scene, Elsa is saying, this is ghastly and I can't stand it. And she's completely right. Yeah, she's and not he wrong says, here at all. You, you must, but and he even emphasizes it in a funny way. You must mm-hmm. understand. And my, my problem. problem. Oh yeah, really? So your problem is that? Why don't you go down and shoot Igor in the head and let the monster go? Yeah, you know it isn't your problem. Well, what he's got is a series of victimless crimes here. Ah, <laughs> he's got he's got more victims than crimes. Yeah, to does. be honest, yeah, he does. You know, and has, has he really told her his problem? Yeah, does, that's the other. Does part she know what his problem is? Because he's like, you've got to understand my problem. Yeah, and does she know what this is? Because the way she's acting, she doesn't know that's quite what, understand all the pieces that are coming together around her. Exactly, and that's what. I completely agree and this is what I tried to sort of touch on last week is it's hard to even and that's actually now that I think about it why we did the thing where we watched a little bit before and a little bit after because mm-hmm. I'm like yeah where exactly are we because yeah. she's talking in a way as if she it almost she almost acts as if she's forgotten the, what she already knew <laughs> oh, she, like the monster <laughs> and I don't know if we said this at the time but the monster took her head and slammed it into a door <laughs> <laughs> it really looks yeah, like that yeah it does that's, I don't think that's what happened but it's certainly the yeah. way it's photographed and staged that's so looks. that whole scene is not none of that can be lost on her you know <laughs> yeah. and she does say the monster when yeah. she wakes up she yeah. inquires about the monster and about is Kettering. he okay Kettering, yeah that's <laughs> the joke we made yeah. but so she seemed a little bit more on the ball then than she does now, and that's why I think when we talked about last week is this scene looks a little it cut like up. a little jumbled, yeah. There's some dialogue that maybe didn't make it that would make it a little bit clearer, right, and the right. script is, the script book script we have is here no is no help. help. Hey, by the way, I don't know if we've oh, announced yeah, we it all. Oh, yeah, we should mention that. But uh, apparently uh, they've found uh, an earlier version of the script of this film, and it, they're going to put it out. Tom Weaver, Tom Weaver and is Greg part Mank of, are working on it. Part of his uh, script from the Crypt series. Yeah. For Bear Manor, yeah. And the way he he described it is you know this is much more interesting uh, than the one they put out which was basically what they put on film and I thought yeah that's pretty that's, true that's, especially this one yeah but we have that problem overall I think that's mm. one of the things about well I think you know Frankenstein is very very close to the film okay the script yeah is very close to the film did you ever get that did you ever read it I don't even think I ever got it maybe oh. I have it because Bear, Bear Manor reissued it so you can get it for like 20 bucks oh Okay, I should do that. Amazon or to their, to their website. Too late now. We're not doing that one anymore. Oh, I could go back after we're done with this film and just start over. Start over, yeah, we could. I could do, you know, the James Whale quadrilogy or whatever. Yep. Well, one of the things I think is interesting about anything you are interested in, be it Star Wars, Doctor Who, Monsters, Star Trek, anything, is you can often find uh, different versions of scripts. It'd be like draft one, two, three, right. and four, and then you right. can watch the evolution of it, and you can hear the different stories of it, and then and stuff like this is I think it's because it's going back far enough in time. Nobody involved in making Ghost of Frankenstein thought anybody'd give a crap. Right. Six weeks after 
after it came yeah, out. Yeah, once it came out, it was like, well, what's next? <laughs> it's like, well, yeah, as evidenced by the way they haphazardly have characters do whatever the hell they want right, them to do right. in the later films. Not actually, that's pretty, it's, it's got no, a pretty I think solid... going uh, forward, it's a little more... But like Dracula just doesn't make any oh, sense. Oh, that just goes all over the place. It yeah. goes, yeah, and the Wolfman is cured and then he comes back, yeah, whatever. Whatever. So we, d- we don't have a bunch of versions of the scripts and we, we don't have a very easy way to analyze the growth of the story other than what Mank tells us for in the first 10 pages. Yeah. So I'm very much looking I'm forward really to I'm really looking forward to it. An earlier version of the script that well, well, is full of, And I know Wolf is in it. He mentions that Wolf yeah, is in it. Wolf is in it and what else did he say? I don't, I don't want to give too much. I don't much. remember either. I'm willing to just start this one all over yeah, again. Yeah, let's do then. that. Yeah. I think we better. Instead, um, so we're going to skip the Wolfman and do Ghost of Frankenstein twice. Yep. Yeah. Perfect. All right. So, anyways, uh, uh, one wo- thing I wo- can assure you. Yes. I can assure you with all I can assure- with all certainty. Yes. Is the monster will never trouble anyone again. Yes. Uh, just that one little thing. That's the only thing I'm willing to say without a doubt. This is absolutely true. Yeah. Is that the monster will never trouble yeah. anyone again. It's time for, that's right, that sound of a troublesome monster can only mean it's time for <laughs> Bill's Troubling Monster <laughs> update. He don't know the monster very well, do he? I don't think a Bill's Troubling no, Monster we, update we, would last very long. It would last about ne- till next minute. and then. I guess we'll see. Yeah, you know, he, maybe we will do Bill's Troubling yeah, Monster. He, 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 he causes a little bit he, of a fuss. Yes, yeah, it's... it's this is the this is the way people talk in movies and um, well they talk it can, in it these can, absolutes yeah, like these that. absolutes like that and some people in real life it can be a little frustrating but in this case I think it works out perfectly because we are meant first of all he's a Frankenstein and that's all about hubris hubris is baked into the Frankenstein it is name. yes and so it works on that level but also in particular this Frankenstein. Yeah. Seems a bit clueless about what he's doing and why. Wolf was clueless in his own way, but at yeah. least he was dead sure what he was doing. Yeah. He didn't care if the monster bothered him. Well, nah, I shouldn't say that. I guess he was a little, a little thrown up, by it. A little uptight when it, up it, when it, it actually happened. Down, yeah. yeah. Uh, but Ludwig doesn't seem to really think that far out. Yeah, that's true. Um, but then there's a, a lot of ugly business going yeah, on there here. Is, it's there, a, it's, yeah, it's, it's just, none of this is helpful, this really. This isn't the only thing making it a toxic workplace. <laughs> right. Like, it is literally exuding, pr- presumably, toxic fumes out of those Yeah, things. I would think so. Yeah. Uh, camera tracks laterally as Bomer knocks and enters. And without it, waiting to hear anybody say, come in. Yeah, just barges in. Without waiting to find out if Ludwig banging Elsa on the <laughs> yeah, no, no. Got her bent over. And <laughs> over the desk. <laughs> oh, God. I don't know Do what's I, happening anymore. I, I, Who's that? voice talking Tom, uh, you've cut that out he uh he uh, gives a perfunctory good morning to elsa yes very perfunctory is yeah exactly like oh, very shit. definition oh, of oh she's here, here. <laughs> yeah. yeah good morning perfect yeah. perfect and he doesn't really even look he's at not her. impolite no he's not impolite but he doesn't look at her he yeah. just good morning good morning and straight acknowledge to, another human exists yeah because frankenstein and i don't have a relationship we don't do good mornings <laughs> yeah yeah right because he doesn't say good morning to him he doesn't say good morning to him I'm wondering doctor when you plan to dot 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 operate only atwell could say it with that much portent yeah yeah Exactly. When I watch, I mean, it's it, a pretty innocuous line. It's very, it very much is <laughs> but, because that is what they're planning to yeah, do. Yeah, but, but at it, will it's, invest. It's this cool that he's when you're, when you're planning to, to put Kettering's ba- brain into the monster would be. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's what he's. Yeah, it's what he's trying he's, not to say. Yeah, I hope I don't accidentally <laughs> say. We're putting <laughs> well, Igor's brain. I mean, I, I mean, I mean, uh, I'm, uh, 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 nothing, nothing. I'll come in again. Uh, <laughs> I'll come in again. <laughs> um, in the script, uh, Bomer says, "Are you going to operate today, Doctor Frankenstein?" And Frankenstein says, "Tonight, Theodore. Start the dynamos and keep them running <laughs> yeah, yeah. for five hours." Yep, I like that. I saw. I didn't have a chance to write it down. Like I said, I this was all last minute. At once. Yeah. Well, he he thinks it over, and he, I th- I don't think he's that decisive about it. Yeah. Though he says it, it's almost apologetic. Like at once. Then much more emphatically, tonight if possible. Which would be implied by at once. At once. Yeah. Next week, if absolutely <laughs> <Yeah>. necessary. <laughs> Sometime this year. Yeah, Get yeah. lost. Will you go away, please? <laughs> then uh, Quit Lud- badgering me with all these questions. Ludwig leaps to his feet as much as Hardwick <laughs> leaps to anything. Yep, in that's this. true. We've been hard on him, but he is giving a very uh, lackadaisical performance in this film versus other things I've seen him in. That's true. Um, like Rope. Like Rope, like yeah. The Lodger, a few other things I can... Uh, he, he's he got the funny hair. He's got the funny hair? He's got like a widow's peak. He's in a... Oh. 
not a cat. Yeah, I don't anyway. know what it is. Never he, mind. He narrates. Is he like in Fu Manchu or something like that? No, no. no. Anyway. He narrates uh, War of the Worlds and he's really good. At, you know, oh, really? Yeah. The Orson Welles version? No, the <laughs> the George Pal version. Oh, okay. Orson yeah. Welles, uh, I don't know if you're aware of this, narrates, narrates the Orson, Orson Welles, Welles yeah. version. I, I should, should like, like to just... see the uh, patient... I should like to see the patient immediately, he yeah. says, which is quite obvious why. He wants to end this conversation. <laughs> yes. Also. Like yes. It, 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 yeah. When and I say quite obvious, it actually isn't, it, it I guess, isn't, but, but he can't get out of this room fast yeah, yeah, enough. I, it's true. Yeah. And, that, and then we are left with Elsa looking like, She's like what the, what the yeah, fuck what just happened, happened here? Yeah, as yeah. he prances off. Yeah. Well, no, he doesn't hear Not, it. Well, the next scene. The next... When it, when it cuts to the... Is it a lap dissolve? No, it's just a cut. Okay. It cut to them... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, he's called Theodore twice in this scene, I think, in the script. I have more notes on this later. Yeah. And then he, Kurt in every succeeding mention of him after that. I don't that. know that that's true. I thought it was, okay. All right, well, then uh, that, I was going to mention it in that scene, in that minute. But okay, so You're right. Um, he definitely calls him Kurt twice yeah. in the next time in the we next see him. the next couple times, yeah. Yeah, whatever. It's better off to just call him Bomer or Dr. Bomer. I like just Bomer. It has a nice... Uh... I like the great Dr. Bomer, <laughs> not to spoil anything. <laughs> Then what happens? Uh, enter the lab, cross to a big doohickey. Yep, it's big. a. It's not the generator. It's just in front it's of the generator, kind of boxy thing on a platform. Yeah, it's probably a uh, MRI. Yeah, I think so. It's a primitive standard. MRI. A, yeah, very early form of. Uh, then they push it back. Revealing they just push this big machine. Turns out it's on a thing. It's on, it's on rollers. Apparently, it's not on a track because there's no track there. Right. So it just so it was, uh, that wouldn't hide it very well. The uh -uh. fact that you in fact there's move a big it. it's track. Measured. Running into <laughs> this the... a big drive. What's this track for? Nah, I don't nothing, know. Nothing. That's that's, no, there, a, that's legacy. Was, that's that's that was, not that was, involved with that. And then revealing a, a little trap, trap door, door kind of thing. That's what I wrote too. I didn't know There's what else no to call door, it. There's no door. There's not a trap. It's just a on hole it. in the ground with stairs. But I didn't know what else to call it. So yeah, it's, a it's trap, like a trap, trap door. door. Yeah. And they go down below below the lab. They start to ascend, and there's almost an abrupt cut. Okay. The edit, it doesn't give them enough time, I think. There should be a few more frames of them going down okay, before I see. it cuts to Igor and Junior in their little, what you call it, a dorm. And yeah. uh, Lugosi starts talking right away, so there should be a little air in between those. But I agree. Yeah, that is, it is an awkward, but it is, it's not a big deal. It's not a big it's deal. Not who, who cares? But, I guess it's a basement. Chain. Oh, that was by the way where Ludwig Ludwig was prancing. Uh, oh yes, yes. When they come they in, across when they to cross the, to the they, machine, they enter the lab and cross he the does machine. The patented, a little, little tippy toe. Yeah, he's just he's very light on his feet and he graceful. Is. Yes, he is. Good for him. I'm not like. I that. am not at all either. <laughs> They're, I guess they're just they're chilling in a, a basement chamber or I don't know what to call it. It's yeah, like it's a weird because I have more notes on this next week when I think it becomes a little bit more clear okay. where this is. Okay. Like right now you don't have any idea where we. Not are. really. I mean, we just yeah. know that it's underneath the lab we somewhere. We don't even know that because we haven't. Oh, I guess. I guess they haven't, yeah, I guess you're right. <laughs> I guess you're right. We just cut to a space, but it is reasonable to assume it's, it's underneath. There's you know a lantern on a table, some benches, a mattress up some on a little picnic table. Yeah, a picnic table. Yep. There's no picnic basket though. No so picnic basket. Yogi there's apparently a was already a, Yogi was already there. So ah, uh, so there's no picnic basket. A new brain. You understand? To replace the criminal brain. You know, you know the thing that makes you a criminal. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't appear that uh, Junior it's weird, understands actually. The anything. more I talk about, it, oh, I have that. Yeah, I think I said the same thing. Yeah. No, maybe I said it in a later one. But yeah, what the hell? <laughs> I, I I don't know how much of the communication between Igor and the monster is um, all in Igor's head. <laughs> or, you know what I mean? Like it's, this isn't really happening. We'll get into that more next week, probably. Yeah, but yeah, yeah he says so. a new brain. You understand? And, yeah, and a new brain. A new brain. Saying, yeah. New brain. Yes, yeah, right. Then he says it twice. <laughs> new yeah. brain. And then he points to his forehead. Yeah. Like Junior's gonna go. Oh, oh my new brain. brain. Well, I don't think anybody told Junior that cameras were rolling. <laughs> yeah, they, yeah. they could have been <laughs> just a mannequin standing there for I, all its. I worth. actually, uh, I wrote this. This is my last note. Cheney plays it completely inert. <laughs> He's like, <laughs> yeah, he might be a statue. It's the very definition of inert, yes. Yep. <clears throat> then we see Ludwig and Bomer descending some steps, and that's where the minute ends. And that's where the minute ends. All right, well, thanks for joining us. Any more questions, wise ass? Now it's time for... Um, <laughs> Got any more? Got any wise ass comments? Wise asses brought to you by Patreon.com/slash Frankenstein Minute. The 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 Patreon.
please visit patreon.com <laughs> and give us some money. So what you do is you can support your favorite podcast or even this podcast if you want by joining at the $2 level and then you become what's called a friend and you get each episode one day early. But if you if you are feeling especially generous, you can join at the $5 level. <sighs> Wise ass level. Do I need to explain all this all every fucking well, time? Here's the thing. Wise I, did, I got level. a call yesterday. I meant meant to mention this. I got a call from PBS yesterday, and they, they want us to do all of their fundraisers. Yeah, because we're, because we're so good at it. Job, yeah. yeah. Yep, join at the wise ass level, and uh, what we do is we send you the minute, and then you can comment on it, and people comment. Well, we've on... obviously got a few more because we've had new people commenting in the last couple of weeks. That could be. That could be. Maybe I some, need to some names pay closer that attention. We're yeah. new to to this. Yeah, maybe so. they changed their name. I don't know. All right. Okay, this isn't that one. Shoot. <laughs> God damn it. We might not have any comments for this one. Oh, uh, bum, bum, come on. Bum, bum. Mike Herman didn't comment? I don't know. I if if I that's the case, then I'm, lost, I'm walking out the door right long now. Long ago lost all ability to tell. Minute forty. This is minute 42? It is indeed. There are actually two comments. Oh, my. And neither of them are <laughs> Mike Herman. Oh. Sorry to disappoint. Mike had other pressing other, business. Other, yeah. Uh, Will Hohenstein. Dine. i got to try and remember. It's just like Frankenstein. You'd think I'd be able to... But then when I was a kid, I, we would call him Frankenstein because it Cause was it's, more yeah. my first exposure. Will says, a new brain, a new brain. Igor sounds like a kid at Christmas. That is really <laughs> yes, true. That's true. This, that signals that thing you were talking about, about getting the old Igor back. Yep. This is sort of the first... He's yeah, very I mean, Igor the, the evil grin at the end of the the laboratory scene, mm-hmm. and now this. Yeah, a new brain. You know, yeah. he's, he's got that excitement, and he's not apologizing and trying to hide the fact that they just killed somebody. Yeah, or um, fretting about fretting about him. Oh, you'll hit be by seen. Lightning. Come back, you, come back. You're going to be seen, my friend. <laughs> uh, yeah, I he, agree. He Igor's walks having a no blast. more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's regular ego. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's... I guess. He's still always had that emotional attachment. And here, it is kind of fun to see these two guys. <laughs> they go way back, you know. Well, well, one guy anyway. One guy anyway. The other guy... The other guy's not fully there. Not... We have no, yeah, have no reason to think anything's going on behind that. <laughs> that the rubber, brain might have just not. It just, just, just it's stopped. Just been sh- it's shut, just down. shut down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but that's going to change soon, too. That mm-hmm. is the advantage of watching. Remember, you used to watch the movie every every time we would get together. Oh, I did, watch yeah. The movie the I have watched this before. a few more times. Oh, okay. But, like, Sun, I, I watched it once before we started, and that was it. Yeah, yeah. All right. Charles Paulson says, I wish we spent more time on the conversation scene with Elsa and Ludwig instead of seeing Ludwig and Bomer going down. <laughs> Sorry. He wrote <laughs> Bomer exclamation point. So I thought that was the end of the uh, sentence, but that's he, he's that's using just, it as he's part using of his, his name. Yes. Instead of seeing Ludwig and Bomer going down to the Bat Cave again. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah yes. well, 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 we, we referenced, did, we did that. say that there appears to be some stuff edited out of that conversation. Yeah. It is a little choppy and a little unclear as to what she knows versus what she's trying to get out of him now. Yeah, yeah. and I think it would also add some context to the scene we're going to see in about a couple of weeks, two, three weeks. It's Things are going to start to get a little more interesting where that's yeah. concerned. And, and I yeah, I would like to see a little bit more of that. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I agree. That's all I got. What are we at? Five minutes? Yep. Okay. Compared to last um, week where we were an hour and a half, so. <clears throat> I'd like to do a song. For you guys, <laughs> uh, no, are we? Where are we at, really? Remember. I don't really think I. Ha- I mean, I can I can dig up another. Um, if you got another one from just random, yeah, uh, let's go to random. Uh, new com. I'll comment on. We'll do the uh, randomizer. YouTube. Okay. D S Archer commenting on minute six, minute thirty six. Jim Henson's Ghost of Frankenstein Babies. <laughs> I don't even remember why I called it that. Nope. D.S. Archer writes uh, 38 colon 11. So I'm assuming that's a reference to 38 minutes and 11 seconds into this video. Uh, I would guess. He says, let's not forget, at the climax of the film, our, quote, hero, unquote, Eric Ernst, town prosecutor Ralph Bellamy, colon, warns the angry mob, colon, you may all be killed. They're turning on the gas. Huh, that's an interesting point. I hadn't uh, yeah. thought about when we were doing the gas. I wonder if that we were talking about the fact that he sucks the gas back in, oh, maybe. Yeah. That you got to clear out, clean out that room. I don't know. I, I can't don't imagine know. One. Well, thirty-eight. That would have Thanks been for when your the comment D S. That Archer. that scene, the minute thirty-eight, though, is when the ghost first appears. This was thirty-six. Oh. Yeah. I thought you Jim said Jim Henson's Ghost of Frankenstein Baby. Wow. 
what, what the hell is going on? I don't know. No, well, I'm maybe you're no, no, talking no. about something else. Maybe I'm not even talking about the same movie here anymore. No, talk amongst yourselves. I just got right. to check something. We out. have another comment. 36, you said? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Th- yeah. That's what the ghost Yeah, that's is. the ghost. That's why I called it because it was this Okay, little... so then what was he saying? About the gas <laughs> at the end of the movie. I don't know. Well, maybe just making a general comment, not, yeah, not specific to that minute. Let's assume that. Thank you for your comment, DS. Yes. Dr. Alex Zorka writes... I'm hoping that somebody here can pin down my vague recollection that The Ghost of Frankenstein was originally even more of a direct sequel in that Basil Rathbone was going to reprise his role as Wolf on Frankenstein rather than have him a brother, younger, or older, take your pick, get involved with the family business. We did reference that in the, the new script, that, or the new, yeah, the new script quote, that's new out. script that's been unearthed and is going to be coming out via Bear Manor. As I've said before, Viseria is either close to walking distance from the village of Frankenstein, or Igor and the monster have hidden in lots of horse-drawn hay wagons or something, some trucks on their way to Viseria. Remember that we see a late 1930s foreign car, pretty contemporary in Son of Frankenstein. Yep. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. All we know about Viseria really is that however far or close by the village of Frankenstein is to it, the townspeople of Viseria don't know all that much about what has happened there. Right. Ludwig Frankenstein in Viseria is a well-respected doctor in Viseria. He's a well-respected man about town. Uh, I've seen ads and poster art for Ghost of Frankenstein where the head of the monster is seen with a skull that has a scar-like ridge on it as well. Is that that? That one? That's not this one, but I wonder, because they do have the... Uh... Either the art designers at Universal or Real Art Pictures that first re-released the film later on couldn't make up their minds as to whether the ghost... I'm not sure if that's it. Yeah, maybe. In Ghost of Frankenstein, refer to the revival of the monster himself or to the ghost of Henry Frankenstein. See, yeah, that's it. See, that's... that's I, I agree I with had that. that same issue I'd referenced when I was a kid before I saw it and saw pictures of him just out of the sulfur pit when he's white. So that first one you showed that showed that skull. Yeah. It was a skull, right? Yeah, this is in the uh, Magic Image film book. Yeah. Uh, has the press book at the back of the book, and there is a poster here that you could get. And that that's, has, that seems like it could be sort of trying to put you in the frame of mind. Of yeah. That. The image is Cheney's doughy face fills up most of the poster. Yeah. Then the, about two-thirds of it is a skull kind of off to the left, and then I believe that's Elsa cowering in the corner there. Um, Evelyn, it's hard to say. It's not a very good picture of anybody, so. There's no Hardwick. There's no Logosi. I mean, that, oh, yeah, that's, yeah. That could be generic. It could person. be anybody, yeah. Anyway, continue. You guys make an interesting point. Hey, look at hey, that. Hey, we made an interesting point. About Henry Frankenstein's frame of mind between the events of Frankenstein and Bride of Frankenstein, moral issues of what he has done, etc. Interesting that by the time of Son, Wolf has completely looked at his father as some kind of heroic scientist. You understand that, don't you, dear? He was right. And Wolf tries to restore the good name of Frankenstein and blames everything on the mistake of a stupid assistant and how my father was made to suffer for his mistake. Ludwig also wants to honor his father's memory. When Ludwig sees the ghost, is it a real ghost or in his mind? I've always thought it was either Henry's ghost or Ludwig's memories of his more elderly father. It's interesting that Henry now wants his son to rectify his mistake by giving his creation another brain. It makes you think that the younger Henry grew into a more bitter and self-righteous kind of scientist as the years go by. So that is one option. That is is very plausible, yeah. The fact, as I alluded to before, that Ludwig instantly recognizes his father in his more elderly appearance makes me think he was the older Frankenstein brother. This is the same theory. Yep, yep that uh, Dr. Alex Zorka gave us before, mm-hmm, or that mm-hmm. Wolf was sent to boarding school and saw very little of his dad. I think well, he both never are, met his dad, though. I Didn't think both say? are true. Yeah, I, I hear he was a great man, yeah. he says. Well, so, he actually says, I'm sorry I never I'm met I'm sorry him. I never met Yeah. Yeah. I think we've all been having fun analyzing these old horror films, and if the writers of these films were still with us, they'd be amazed at how we question their logic and complexities or not of their scripts. I don't think they thought every waking moment over the profundity of what they were <laughs> writing for a paycheck at the studio or that their work would still be talked about some 80 years later. Yeah, I need 80 pages by Thursday, so yeah. that was what they thought. Kurt Siodmak lived long enough to be interviewed somewhat extensively and wrote a book about his life and film career. He didn't defend himself on the harm he did re-Igor's character in Frankenstein meets the Wolfman, but I think his ego was still big enough that he just didn't care. Yeah, he didn't give a fuck about anybody but Kurt Siodmak at that point. I have to admit, it's fun listening to Mr. Evenson and Lang dissect minute by minute these favorite Frankenstein films. Oh, oh well, no, thank no. you. If Sir Cedric had been aware that he was going to be, this was going to happen, he might have put a little more zest in his <laughs> performance. Yeah, if it, if he thought it would play more than a week at the Rialto, then he probably would have. Yeah. 
Well, this is interesting. In another thread here, and I sent this to you, I think, a fellow poster asked if, because this is from the Classic Horror Film Board, Okay. asked if Karloff really referred to Universal as this whole studio is a toilet. Yes. According to, was it actor Ian Wolf? He did. Yeah. Karloff was making The Raven yep. and having to be subservient to Bela, so no doubt Dear Boris was not in the best of moods. Well, and he also had just had issues with the conditions under which things like Frankenstein were shot, where there was no toilet, literally. Yeah. It was a lot of these things that led to the uh, creation of the Screen Actors Guild. Exactly. So by him. By him. Yeah. So and others, but well, he was but one he was first, one of the first or three or four or five. Yeah. yeah. He was very, very instrumental in that. And so we, can't, we can't remove that from the discussion. It's obviously right. his mindset is well. I shouldn't say that. He might he might think he's had a great time and he just wants to make sure everybody gets to have good working conditions. But we yeah. also happen to know that he felt like they the whale beat the shit out of him. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, I I don't think there was huge animosity towards Universal at that point because this was thirty five. Yeah, for the Raven, you and know, he'd he was, already did, made the decision to, and had come back and worked for Whale again. Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, the story goes that uh, Ian Wolf asked him where the toilet was, and yeah, supposedly this whole studio is a toilet. This whole studio is a toilet. Right here, interesting. He says here, had he talked about the studio earlier in the Mummy or during Bride, Karloff may have given a far different answer. Well, Bride and Raven are same year. Yeah, but I think conditions under both. I mean. Compare The Mummy and Bride of Frankenstein to The Raven, budget-wise and prestige-wise. Bride of Frankenstein was huge. Hit a huge budget. Probably was, could afford a toilet. Could afford anything. Yeah. I mean, they, they were so desperate for Whale to make that film yeah. that whatever you want, you got. And uh, same thing with The Mummy was a big, you know, it was on the, that first crest of this horror cycle in the early 30s. Yeah. And it's a very elaborate film. In fact, there was a huge elaborate sequence of the, these two characters of, you know, Ananka and, or not, that's not her name. That's from the other series. Yeah, Imhotep and Anks and Amun throughout history in, like, Roman times and Viking. And, yeah, and filmed? Filmed, and it was all cut. So, you know, they weren't sparing any money on that either, whereas yeah. The Raven is this cheap, tawdry little second string. You know, I don't think Junior produced it. You know, not, the, the more you talk, the more I come to think I, it's, it's all gray. Because this, again, is the same year, though. Yeah. So he's saying the whole studio is a toilet. Did he make the Raven before Bride? I don't, I don't remember. I don't remember now. Because he says, I'm sure Bela might have given someone various answers on the set of Son of Frankenstein or the 1941 Black Cat or during his comeback role in Evan Costello Meet Frankenstein. I think that's a good. That's a good. It all. Way to it's, show it's, that it's, it's all it's, depends on your perspective. Your perspective. Be, yeah, but there's a decade between Son of Frankenstein and Evan Costello. Yeah. And uh, almost a decade back to Dracula from Son. So mm -hmm. yeah, there's a lot of stuff here. All right. Well, and Karloff had the career that Bela probably wanted or thought he was going to have. Yeah. Boris was I Karloff. Know I, I don't know that I've ever really bought that. Really? Yeah. I don't think... I guess I thought that he thought he was a leading man, not a monster. You know, he didn't yeah. want to put on the monster He didn't want to put on the makeup. And that's the career Karloff had. Like you said, the mummy. The mummy might be... The mummy's not exactly an easy makeup job either. <laughs> yeah, no. Not, to, not just the part at the beginning, but... But, but I think through the whole thing, it yeah. had to be just brutal. Brighter Frank Einstein was... Now, this is just release date. Which should work. Uh, May 6th, 1935. Raven, release date. June 6th, 1935. No, I don't know. Uh, July 8th, 1935. Wow, so there has to be some overlap here. Well, possibly, well, but... Well, either way, but it's reasonable but to think that shooting was after. The Raven, the shooting schedule was, I'm sure, a fraction of what Bride was. So I'm sure yeah. Bride was in post-production while the Raven went into production and was released, you know, a month apart. It's an odd time for him to say that. Well, he was kind of done with it with them by his contract was coming to an end okay and you know they were losing the studio anyway by then they knew that or people would have known that uncle carl had made a few poor decisions well that's for sure you know but i just wonder if anybody would have even known about all that what do well, i know I'm, about anything I'm, I'm sure if you work if you work there, you work the there at, yeah, that, probably at that level that Karloff was at probably not to mention the fact that half the people you bump into are named lemley yeah. so that everybody kind of probably knew something something was up anyway where how are we for time we're because here's here. the thing uh he goes on and i think it's good stuff okay there's no reason we couldn't talk about it next week as long as you don't lose it i'm not gonna lose it <laughs> all right i pledge to you i will not all lose right it. so we'll 
who is this? Dr. Alex okay. Zorka. So this will be Phantom Creeps Part 2. There you go. All right. Thanks for joining us. Sure. Come back next week when we'll talk about Oops. Ghost of Frankenstein Minute 43 on Frankenstein Minute. <laughs> oh, dear. And now, a word from our sponsor. You can have vegetables, lots of them, on your table next winter. You can have your own fresh vegetables on your table this summer if you have your own Victory Garden. Yes, there's no restriction on home canning and home processing of vegetables and garden fruits and berries. Plan your Victory Garden now. Get your garden plot lined up. Get the advice of a garden expert if you need it. And be prepared to grow your own for Victory. Join a garden club or a community garden movement or share a garden with your neighbor. You can help win the battle of food production. You can help our fighting man get the food they need. You can help save the vital metals used in commercial canning if you grow your own Victory Garden in 1943. For further information, write to Victory Gardens, Washington, D.C. Victory Gardens, Washington, D.C.